Good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Ritvika Sanap, President of RIT ACM Student Chapter from Ram Rao Adhik Institute of Technology, Diva Patil, deemed to be a university. I welcome you all for a two-day hands-on online workshop on Swelt, a tool for building fast web applications organized by the Department of Information Technology in association with RIT ACM Student Chapter. This workshop is inspired by the motivation given to us by Honorable Dr. D.Y. Patil Sir, founder of D.Y. Patil Group and Dr. Vijay Patil Sir, Chancellor of D.Y. Patil University, Honorable Principal Sir, Dr. Mukesh Patil Sir and HOD of Information Technology, Dr. Ashish Jadhav Sir. The key to pursuing excellence is to embrace an organic long-term learning process and not to live in a shell of static, safe mediocrity. Usually, growth comes at the cost of previous comfort or safety, said Josh Waitzkin. While the world looked at the pandemic as an obstruction, you saw it as an opportunity to learn something new and explore a huge progress in the technical world. Web developers are at the forefront of the internet age. The websites we browse, the gifts we order and the news we read online are all made possible by the web developers who design, build and implement internet websites. They are heavily involved in the website creation from helping designing aesthetic properties such as layout and color to technical con considerations such as how to design a website to handle a given amount of internet traffic. Not only is the web development field exciting and on the forefront of the digital age, but it is also a growing field. Today's session will explain how to become a web developer, what skills and education are needed based on the current market trends and what people can expect as a web developer professional. Today, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Srinivas Shah, who is currently associated with Pocket Bits Vashi. Our industry expert has always been a tech enthusiast and his experience in the field of web development will help us create our dream website using Swelt. Participants can post their questions and mark attendance in the Google form link shared on the YouTube comment section. Both are separate forms. Attendance link will remain active from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. only. I'd now like to invite Mr. Sri Nivas Shah, sir, to start with the workshop. Over to you, sir. Uh, hey, guys. I hope you can see me. All right. So before starting the session, I want to like discuss a few things about uh, how should we get started with industry and all. So I'll take up to like 15 minutes for telling you what the industry expects from you. And in that 15 minutes, we'll divide it into like 7.5 for uh, what you should do to get a good interview opportunity in any of the companies. And the rest of the 7.5 uh, minutes would be for how you should uh, like um, design your LinkedIn profile so that you can attract all those industry people. So firstly, I would like to like say like, whenever you are uh, making some projects, please add them on GitHub. The beginner's mistake is that we always try to like make some projects on um, some language and then we just follow the course and we shouldn't do that, all right? So courses are good uh, as a head start but we shouldn't uh, uh, use them as like a boilerplate for making our project. So what we need to do is, uh, all we need to do is, is watch the course first and then make the own version of our app. So let's say course is having some e-commerce website that has a coffee shop or maybe a library management system. So what we should do is, mostly we can clone that app in such a way that we can make it ours. So basically we can add the features which are not already in the course. So let's say we can add some payments, payment gateway like Stripe. And also we can add something um, 
good like some um, javascript uh, some javascript library which makes the website look better and responsive so i'm beginning to present my screen i'll start with the presentation all right so i i hope you guys can see my screen so so basically since i'm a web developer i made this presentation on a, a library called reveal js all right so let's get started with it so this is what i use for making my html presentation since i'm a web developer i like presenting on uh, web pages all right uh, so let's get started with it so in the beginning i want to tell like how industry works right so basically um, whenever whenever we um, yeah whenever we go in industry the pace is really very fast so like uh, we cannot expect like to we just join the industry and they are not going going to give us some work like they expect a lot from us already so uh, when i joined the industry i was only working on python Django and UJS. So after a time, they expected me to work on everything. Like all these technologies you are currently looking at, were the technologies I worked on. So basically, this is the tech that I deal with. All right. So yeah. So yeah. So after that, I was having this reaction. Basically. Uh, so. what is the goal over here so i have seen a lot of students making same mistakes again and again like um let's say we go on linkedin and we check someone's headline it's always like a, a full stack developer front end developer flutter developer so you shouldn't be doing that like as a student you should always have this uh, motive that you should attract the talent hiring people towards you like what makes you unique like what like what what's your usp like how you want to sell uh, yourself to them all right so basically you shouldn't ever do this thing like call yourself a full stack developer a web developer and flutter developer because it may confuse the hiring person so i have a lot of friends in other industries and most of them are hr and they always discuss with me what are do's and don'ts of uh, interview planning session all right so basically uh, whenever you uh, start to learn a technology make it your primary technology first let's say i am uh, i am good with react at the same time i'm working with other technologies as well all right so what i can do is i can keep react as my primary technology like i should know it from every other point like any pro developer knows so pro means professional over here so you need to be professional with one language and one framework at least to move on with another language so now what nowadays what kids do is mostly they watch some course on udemy and they start uh, putting that a uh, headline that i am a full stack developer i am a react developer i am this i am that and and most in the worst case scenario would be this uh, this thing where a uh, student does this like full stack developer hyphen react developer hyphen flutter developer uh, like what is your usp over here you are planning to get hired as an intern or as a developer so you are you are not having the tag right now the company will give you the tag like a company can uh, see where you suit according to them do you suit in the front end do you suit at back end all right uh, this is the motive okay so with this i'll uh, share some of my uh, experience so i am working at pocketbits as a full stack developer i have made some open source contribution to a game called vein glory hello she sorry to uh, she uh, shrinivas sir sorry to interrupt you sir yeah. uh, can you see if there is an echo going on from your side uh it there's no echo here ma'am okay okay all right so this is uh this is the vein glory community edition i have made i have made some 
uh, I made some uh, open source contribution to this, as well as my first contribution was a project with Hackintosh. So this, um, so this this was the first uh, ever open source co commit I have made over here. So basically, uh, I have experience uh, with full stack and a lot of technologies as well. But I call myself as a web developer because I'm confident with it. So let's say like uh, let's say when I ask you you your full name, you will say first name, last name, and the middle name, right? You won't add the other names, like you won't add a neighbor's name, right? Let's say my name is Srinivas Gopal, so I'll always add the last name as my original last name. I won't add my neighbor's last name. So it's just like that. You always need to associate your main technology with your name. Like, um, let's say if you're a student, so XYZ student is a Flutter developer, all right? You don't need to add like Flutter developer and then machine learning and then everything. Okay. So now we are getting started with the JavaScript first. So in today's session, we are going to just concentrate on JavaScript. And then tomorrow we'll start with Swell. So basically, coming back to the um, Swell slide. So now when we are starting with this, and how would you choose a perfect library first? So for, just for your information, guys, Swell is not a library, it's a compiler. Just like your Java is, all right. ReactJS is a library and UJS is a library. I I don't personally prefer Angular, but it's all your preference, all right. So Swift is something which compiles your uh, HTML code in real time and builds it for you. In ReactJS, it works a little bit different. React and UJS uses something called as virtual dog, all right. So whenever you like, you inspect the element over here. And whatever elements you see over here are known as a part of DOM. So the area you see inside the browser, like excluding the URL bar and the back and front buttons over here, is called as DOM. So like whenever you are inside a browser sandbox, you are inside a DOM. So whatever you see over here is part of DOM. And if I clear this, all right. And if I write document, all right, you can see a lot of things. Of, okay, so when you type document, you can see a lot of things over here. So basically, in JavaScript, you can access your whole HTML DOM using document tag. All right. So I think uh, today's session, in today's session, we'll get started with JavaScript. Okay. So first, you need to start with the editor. For for this session, I'm using VS Code. But if you don't have VS Code, you can just like uh, start a new tab and then press F12. Or in Windows, you can press F12, or in other computers, you can try with inspect element. Go to console. Mm. Uh, go to console. And you can start over here. So basically, you need to write your first JavaScript program. All right. So you need to say console.log. Hello. So now it gives us an output which is hello world and undefined. So console log statement is a way to print anything inside JavaScript. As you can see, we are inside console and we are logging some uh, input over here. So we just wrote hello world and it's logging inside the console. So it's console.log. I hope it makes sense for you guys. And we can see there's something called undefined over here. The reason behind getting undefined is that whenever we console log something, we don't return anything. So in that case, it returns us undefined. All right. 
so let's um, get started with the data structures so basic data structures in javascript are spring oh, sir can we have a font little uh, maximum yeah sure ma'am all right so basic data structure are string and then number all right so number is basically in other programming languages like python and java you have other data structures for holding decimal and float values right so number considers everything inside it all right and we have uh, other data structures as list uh, arrays or lists we can call them in python array and object all right so basically uh, while working with js we we don't have object oriented programming concept over here there is something called as prototype which takes the place of object oriented programming in javascript all right so a, a bit info about javascript javascript is the only language which works on the browser currently so whenever you see some website like this and it's showing some uh, dynamic responses right so all this is because of javascript so basically javascript was introduced by netscape the browser company to make your browser look more dynamic and cool all right just like we use facebook and we see all the dynamic nature inside the facebook okay and a guy named ryan dahl it's r y a n ryan b a h l dahl made node js so what node js does so basically previously it wasn't possible to uh use javascript outside the browser it was only possible uh, inside the browser like you can uh, see now right if i if i uh, see that uh, it's elements and go over here i can see some javascript over here as well if there's present if it is present over here so if i inspect this yeah so you can see the script tag is over here it's written over there uh it's written that text slash javascript all right so this is how the javascript works so the guy named ryan dal used c++ and compiler to uh make javascript program run outside the browser which is now the compiler is now called as node js all right so if you open your terminal or um powershell in windows so how would you open powershell okay so if you open your terminal over here and if yeah, sort of here okay and if you type node if you have it and if you type node you'll get a screen like this to exit it you need to press like control c once and twice and to check the version you need to say node v now you can see the version so i suggest for tomorrow's session you please you guys please download node js all right uh, you can get it from node you can just get a search node on google and you can um okay you just need to google node n o d e node yeah. this way you can just get node js directly all right you can download the latest version or the staple version depending upon you guys so any of this version wouldn't make any changes in your output all right coming back to this since you have wrote your first hello world program we can start with the data structure so there are like three ways of declaring a variable let's say i want to de uh, declare a variable with my name var name equals string right since shri is a string we add double quotes in front and the end of it all right and then if i just say console dot log name it will print shri and undefined so basically console log is a method in javascript to check whether the program is buggy or not so unlike other programming languages it's very difficult to find out what the bug is because javascript isn't good with um, error handling and it's a weakly type language all right so basically you should 
see over here var name tree all right so basically var was a convention used before 2015 and after 2015 the javascript language updated and it was uh, started to it was called as ecma script or e c m a ecma ecma is a standard which holds javascript now and it updates javascript according to the developers need all right so what happened is they made some changes in this convention with like where we use var to declare a name all right now we declare a uh, name set let name equals shrinivas all right now if i uh, and if i console dot log it see okay so i'll clear the screen for now all right so basically if i if i press the up button on my console i'll be getting this code again all right if you if you are not getting the code back please try pressing the up arrow key on your keyboard and then press enter and now the difficult part why why is this thing required like why let is required when var can fulfill our needs like if var is there while let is required all right so the basic answer for this is var var was like buggy uh, buggy because it was function um, like function scope and let is block scope all right so just let me explain you so let's say if i create a function in um, in javascript you create function using this function let's say name all right you just like create a function like this in between you can add anything on you return inside the function all right and i say return um r a i t a c n all right okay so since we have declared the name we can see the error over here so let's say we want to minimize the error we'll change the name name and in javascript the underscore convention is not good we always use the camel casing so like name function all right and now it says it's undefined so let's say name function and i if i press enter now i can see just a function it's empty and it's not doing anything all right to access the function we need to say name function and then we need to add two pair of curly uh, sorry circular braces and then there we go now i can see the rid acm over here so the issue with the var was it was function scope uh, let's say if i created something like this okay since i wanted to minimize the time i already wrote it over here all right so basically okay so if you press control shift and tilde on your vs code third is the button beneath the escape button all right you can see it over here so if you have node installed and you have vs code so if you write node index dot js all right okay so now you can see it over here what i have done is i have wrote a function start which has a for loop inside it basically if you are coming from an engineering college you don't need to know what for loop does basically it's, it just loops in this range of number so it says please loop uh, under the range of 5 so you can see 1 2 3 4 like all these things all right so what var did was it was function scope right so whenever i wrote the function and i ran a loop over here i only wanted this console dot log to run and rather it ran this console dot log as well so that's why you can see it's 1 2 3 4 and then 5 and let's say if i want to like write a clean code i would say let let and then i'll just run this code okay i didn't save it and then i'll save it and i run this code and it should throw me an error now you can see that console dot log i is not a valid code all right so this is the way that 
let handles the situation okay and now uh, i'd like to clear this so basically what we are going to learn in javascript today are these things um so first is like arrays um then we are going to see objects and then we are going to see some built in function which are uh, important for uh swell so so this is not a complete javascript training guys again it's just this javascript enough to learn swell it's not completely uh it's it's not it's not a complete course it's just a crash course it's just the important parts of the javascript all right so since you have seen var and let and there is a new convention called const which says const which mean constant and let's say const um let's say mm, again name or second name second name snake casing camel casing second name is equal to sha all right and now if i try to change second name to something else it won't be possible so let's say second name is equal to mm now you can see the error right and it says by error assignment to constant variable so this isn't possible all right so after this if i try to let let um um college name equals hariti college name equals to s i e s now i can change the college name so this is the difference between const and let okay so after that uh you need to learn type casting all right so what is type casting type casting is changing the way uh, like changing the way uh, that a uh, integer looks like let's say this is a string let's say um, rit all right now we get rit way and this is a number let's get it right and if i want to type cast number 33 into string 33 what there there's some operation that i need to do so basically i want to do this let's say i have a number 33 and i want to oh, i want it to look like this 33 in a string format so why type casting is important basically whenever we work with json apis it, everything is in a string format we need to pass it and then we need to change the type of it so basically what i what you guys need to do now is let's say uh, you have some string which is a actual number all right so in this case uh, i'll show you something which is really very important with javascript so why we exactly need type casting is for this as well so let's say we have a number 44 which is in string form and and if i compare this with 44 like usual 44 so now it gives us true but we can see that it isn't true right it's a false value right so basically javascript has two types of equality checks double equals to means only the normal check but triple equals to says that it's a, a type check so now you can see it's false all right so please 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 use this convention always use always use triple equals to with javascript all right and now it gives us false okay so to type call this value to a uh, integer value what i need to do is let's say num let <coughs> equals um string 44 all right and then all i need to do is plus without space num i get a what value 44 all right the other way to do this is let's uh, the other way around is like i want to convert 44 into a string 44 again so i'll write string and then i'll just say 44 and then i got the value but guys since i'm running uh, the code in sandbox 
it's totally possible that you won't get this output when you run it run it on vs code all right if you try running it, it it won't be possible so for now i'll comment this code out okay. sir can you make this font uh, bigger because in the black screen yeah, the sure, sure, sure 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 thank you I'll, Uh, is it visible now? All right. So if I try to do something like this, uh, let's just string forty-four. And if I save this and try to run this file over here, let's say node index js. See, it gives doesn't give anything to me. So for that, I need to do this thing. Console. Not log string forty four and then save it over here. And if I do node index js, see I I receive the output forty four. All right. So let's jump back to the browser where the things happen. all right so i hope you understood this so the other way was to do this if i if you had a string 44 and you wanted to convert it into a number then you could have just done this okay so now let's move on with the other data structures so other data structures are arrays so basically in swift or any other framework whenever you are introducing the data structure to the javascript you won't be making it with let or var because you want them to be constant and untouched let's say you are receiving an api and by uh, by some mistake you redeclared it it will be a issue for you guys all right so what you need to do is let's say let for just this tutorial sake i am using let keyword you shouldn't use this keyword because it's a wrong convention again you should use const all right let's say as my array equals 1 to 3 and then 4 and if i log console log this and if i say my array All right, uh, I can see array which holds one, two, three, four. Uh, so there's a bit of catch over here. Whenever you are using array, you can see. I'll uh, I'll just clear this again. Here, yeah. all right, okay. Now to receive the code back, I'll just use a arrow key. Okay. So yeah, whenever you are working with arrays and you need uh, and you think that the array is type of array, but array in javascript are type of objects all right if i say type of my array now it gives us the output as object so in your mind you will be thinking uh, object is something like this right it looks something like it, it has relationship of key value pairs and all stuff yeah but javascript is a smart language and it compiles your array in such a way that it looks like an object so whenever you see the output uh, don't get tensed you will always see the output like this okay so there's a trick with array which is really important for a developer to know all right uh, so my array equals to now you guys are getting right it holds 1 2 3 and 4 if i say double equals to right and i say 1 2 3 4 <laughs> all right it gives me false All right, but you must be saying that it's a normal check. Please do a type check. Let's do a type check and see. And it still gives us a false value. Why? Uh, because in JavaScript, what happens is array is matched on the basis of location. So if I say my array triple equals to my array, it gives me true because the location on uh, location of my array is equal to the location of its own. All right. Um. let's say you have a box of mangoes and you remove the mango remove a uh, mango inside 
of the box and give it to your friend and now the location has changed and when you try to match those mangoes are those mangoes same or are the branding is the brand, branding is same or something like that the javascript will say it's false because the location is not same because mango one is coming from one friend and the mango two is coming from the other friend so you need to check whether the location is same or not all right it's it's the same thing with the societies right you only allow the parking to the people who are residents not the other, not to the others it's it's the similar concept all right and now we need to see how to how do i index the data so basically to index the data i'll say my array right um at the position 0 so you can see at the uh, there's a very popular meme that computer science people always come from zero it's true computer science people always come from zero so if you index the zeroth position you'll get one all right and now if you want again i'm clearing the console because it's going down all right so i'll declare my array again okay and then if i want to have a value like my array dot slides right and now i uh, imagine that you are going into let's say uh, you are living at washi and you need to go to thane and there's a some there's some starting destination and there's uh, sorry starting position and reaching destination that you give your m indicator app as an input it's similar with the arrays as well let's say you want to you want the value from here till here let's say you want from 1 to 3 all right you'll say from zeroth position to the second position or like to third position actually and why is this all right the question why is answered simply but uh, sim in a simple way now so basically whenever you practice this always make sure that you write first inclusive last exclude i hope you guys are making notes so whenever we start to index a value on first position it's always considered and the last value is in considered all right so if i want to index this array from 1 to 3 i'll need to say 0 to 3 but, but you can see the the position of 3 is 0 1 and 2 all right so if i slice this i'll get this okay so i hope you understand this um so now there's a there's a time to do some operations with array what if i want to push some data inside the array so javascript is a weakly type language hence it gives us advantage that we can make our array dynamic so array can hold everything in javascript and it won't give us error let's say um partial um let's say um, 55 let's see let's give a boolean value as well let's um add some float value over here okay And now if I press enter, it doesn't throw an error because JavaScript is a loose, loosely typed programming language. It's not strict at all. All right. So this is the advantage. And now what I want to do is I want to add number five at the end of this array. How would I do it? Right. So I'll say my array dot push five. Right. If I see my array, now you can see that I have pushed five inside the array. Similarly, if if you are little confused with the arrays and you want to know what functions there are in array, you just need to do my array and dot, and you can see all the functions over here. All right. So there is join, there is index of each and all stuff. So what we just use. um was push all right so you can see all these functions are really very important all right so this is the function we used earlier 
So now if I want to remove some item from the array, all I need to do is, oh, all right. And now I can remove that item. So in the same fashion, all right, let's, let's just print our array. So I'll say console. Oh. My array. So I can see one, two, three, four again. I'll clear the screen. I'll press sub button multiple times to get back to my array. All right. So I wanted to show you things which I think is important for a beginner JavaScript developer. I'll copy this. All right. And now you see everything is stored in memory over here. All right. If I uh, write my array over here, it, it will be outputted over here, right? So if I refresh the screen and if I say my array now, so basically browser is a sandbox. Every time you open a new website, a new window, everything starts from the scratch, all right? It's just like when you uh, go to Facebook, all right? Let's, uh, uh, if you go to Facebook in incognito mode, and you, if you logged in inside the Facebook, the next time if you open incognito mode, it won't be showing you the same account. You have to re-log in with another, another account, all right? So in that case, I have copied the values. I'll paste it over here, my array. So before that, I'll have some cleanup. For cleaning, you just need to write C-L-E-A in clean. Or you can press this button. All right. Okay. So this button can clean console as well. So now we were using arrays, right? So let's say array and then let's call it again. And now I wanted to push the items from the forward position. Like it's from the left. What will I do this? I'll use shift. Shift 20, maybe 34. All right, and now it says you have shifted one item inside it. And let's check my array. Oh, okay. So I declared my array again. I need to console log this after shifting. So what will I do is I'll shift it again. So I'll say my array and shift 34. Console dot log my array. Okay, so basically shift is for removing the values. I was wrong. I, I need to check unshift. Okay, now you can see the 34 in the front. Okay, so guys, it's pretty easy when you are like to uh, Lose some information uh, when you are uh, when you are working with different languages. So I wanted you guys to know what you should do when, if you want to learn JavaScript very thoroughly, and what you should try. All right. First information is don't don't go for courses. Please 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 refer documentations. If I search MDN over here, all right. MDN is Mozilla Web Developer Network. All right, if I go into it, now you can see JavaScript is over here in the technologies. Please re refer this documentation always for learning JavaScript. There's a whole tutorial over here, which is very in depth. So there's JavaScript guide, there's intermediate section, there's JavaScript for complete beginners. Please start learning JavaScript from this thing. You don't have to purchase some course and you, have, you don't have to follow it. This documentation is so good that uh, the official JavaScript documentation is now considered as MDN in developer community. All right. So let's get back to the new tab. And like just like I told you, if I want to unshift three, I can I'll be able to unshift it. So let's say my array. Okay, I wanted to shift it. I'm so sorry. So shift stands for 
hemoglobin any item from left all right and on shift means add in items from left all right and these operations like push and pop are for removing items from the rear which is right side <coughs> shift and unshift are operation used to remove the elements from an array from left side all right i hope you understood this now uh, this is really critical part in programming uh, with javascript as we saw in vs code all right uh, okay i'll just yeah, maximize it as we saw in vs code if i just comment this out and uncomment this so there's a uh, this loop going on for loop all right but uh, this for loop takes a lot of time to write and i wanted to write it using some easy method how would i do it right, i'll just minimize this again and go back to my browser so to uh, write a for loop in easy way you can use some built in functions inside the array method which all right so let's say array and then dot let's say for each and then i'll so you can see that the array is collection of like elements for each says uh, for each is a built in function which will give you a single element at an instance so let's say for each now all right now oh sorry i this okay so basically whenever you are writing a function it takes two brackets like this and then you need to do this right now it says undefined all right i'll just say console log oh. now you can see it gave us 34 2 3 <coughs> 4 all right and uh, undefined so basically for each is some value which doesn't return anything so let's get back to the array i have copied it already so i'll paste it over here and what if i wanted to do some operations while um having that array to be manipulated all right so what i'll do is first let's let's take an example like how it is different with for each so basically you can see my array dot for each and it gives us a individual element over here and then we can print it all right but what if i wanted to assign this whole thing to a new array a uh, new variable so for that okay so what we can do is i just okay i'll go in the beginning and i'll just say let my var equals this All right, but if I print my var, so it will give me undefined. So basically, what I wanted to prove over here was for each is something that doesn't return you anything. So that's why you are getting undefined again and again. So if I want something to be returned from an operation on array, what will I need to do is is just this. Uh, let since we have uh, declared my var with let. i can say my var equals um my var array dot map so map is an alternative for for each which always gives you an individual element again so if i say 
Nam. Uh, it's it's not a convention to write nam or something. It's just up to you what you want to do or something like that. All right. You can just see it as a item, and then you can have this, and then you can say return. All right. Return. Okay. Now it returns us an array. So if I say my so now it gave us one two three four. Previously it gave us undefined while using for each method, right? And I'm clearing it again. I'll just turn it up a little bit down. All right. So now. Let's check what else we can do. Let's just go back to the original array, my array again. All right, and now uh, let's let's just assume that we got this array from an API. API is something like a server, which is away from your computer and just connected through internet. So, just for the example, what I can do is I will just search JSON, JSON, PyPy code, PyPy code. And just press enter. So now you can get to this site called JSON Placeholder. All right. Um, if someone is there in moderators, can you please just paste it on uh, YouTube chat or something like that so other can get access to it. All right. So basically, this website gives you an API for free to just to practice. All right. You can see JSON Placeholder. All right. And now you can see all the levels of the API you get over here. So like get and post, put, patch and delete. So let's start with get. What is a get API? Whenever you, uh, whenever there's some server hosted in some place, and you wanted to get the data from that API and show it on your page, you need to do a get request. All right. For the best example of get request, would uh, request would be going to Google. All right. Just just search Google as so. You see, I. Input at Google inside the search bar, and then what I got was all the results which includes Google. So in real time, it searched this, it it queried this Google term for us, and printed it on the screen. So this is the best example for the API. So what you do uh, need to do right now is we just need to um, let's say. Um, You wanted posts, all right? There's a single post inside here. You can see this slash one, all right? If I go to two, I'll get another post. So if I need to see all the posts, I'll go over here. So now you can see all the posts over here, all right? What I need to do is just copy one of these, all right? I only need one, okay? And then I'll just copy this. Oh, I'll sorry. I'll just copy this link over here, and I'll just keep it for reference over here. All right. You can just keep it for reference. And now, if you are on the same website, you can see that there's a little code over here. Says fetch JSON placeholder dot py 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 code dot com slash two slash one. So. What we can do is come back to our console. Uh, let's just okay. Let's say Control V, right? And uh, we'll go back to that thing because I just copied this again. Okay, so I'll go to post slash one. I'll just copy all this thing. Just copy this and then paste it over here on this place. All right. And now in front of fetch, there's an edge. Yeah. So I can see a promise over here. And now if I go in a network. 
and I can go to XHR. I can see there was a request made to this thing. All right, if I open it, you can see. That. So if you guys want to do the same thing like I did, you just need to go over here again in this one placeholder type, copy this link again, and then you need to copy this fetch thing. So fetch is basically a function which gives you a, a like option to get the API from certain website. All right. I'll just refresh it again. Okay, I'll go to elements or console. And I can just refresh it. Right. If I say let my API equals console Is it some issue? I think it's the link or the browser tab is broken. I'll go to another tab. Just press F12. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can press F12. If you're on Linux or any other Mac machine, you can just inspect the element. Or control shift type is the command shift type is the shortcut. All right. So what I can do is let's just copy this code from here. Okay, so this is the code you wanted to have. So I'll just copy it and then I'll paste it over here. Okay. This page is okay. Okay, so there's some issue with the browser, but you can as you can see the request is being made. Because if we go in network and see the XHR type request, XHR is the request which is made to API. And if we double click on it, now we can see that the request is being made over here. All right. So, so let's get back to the operations on array. So I think we had an my array with yeah, one, two, three. Let's increase some elements over here. Six, seven, eight. And now if I print my array. Okay, so the tab is broken again. We'll copy this. And then I will go to another tab. Okay, I'll just inspect the element again. Go back to console. First, I'll press clear and then paste. All right. And now, if I say my array, yeah, I can see the array. So let's say uh, we got this from an API. All right. And we need to filter it. So, how would uh, we filter this value? <coughs> We have received from the API. Okay. So what we need to do is um, Yeah. So I all right. So to do this. My array. Let's say I want to filter out four. I received four from the API. Let's see that. Now equals to four. All right. And now I'll use something called filter. My array dot filter. Again, filter map and for each are like brothers. They always will ask you for a individual item right here. I select them again and then I do this. Press shift and enter to avoid 
committing the code again now let's say return item dot equals to no. all right so now you can see that we have removed no code from this so in certain scenario i wanted to show that if we fetch uh, data from some api from here maybe and then if we wanted to do some operations on that api over here so this is the way we would do it all right so the these are these operation are called as c r u d crud c stands for creating so creating is basically like let's say let arr equals 1 2 and 3 and this is this is the way to create it and then updating it would be use something like adding a map so if i say i'll do the same operation i'll just remove the filter i'll say map all right and i'll add a boolean if it item equals to now if i come equals to now then return plus six else so you can see i made some operations on the array and now it returns us a different array so by using map i can reassign this thing to another variable let's say let arr or oh, alright so for first we need to like press the up button so it's taking the whole screen again i need to clear it so i'll just clear this all right i'll just print the array again okay where is my array yeah for okay. it so i'll just see my array dot map this this function over here and i'll just assign it to some new array so let's say let new array equals to this now it returns me a new array all right so we tried uh, for each right up Now, shift, unshift, slice, push, and oh. So these are the important functions which I use for arrays. All right. okay so these are the enough functions you need to manipulate an array and work with the array now we can move with the objects so before moving to objects i'll uh, tell you that two types of functions so there is a function which look exactly like the java one so you need to write function and this is the basic syntax and before the curly uh, this circular braces you need to add the functions name so like functions name would be no name in camel case and then it return something all right return some name all right and you can invoke the function by saying no name but since you are using a sandbox it's, it's not real script 
real script is when you write a lot of code inside a text editor and then you run all the code together it it is called as a real script all right so this won't work in the editor all you need to do is console dot log and then you need to say mm so not now no name all right so let's see what happens if we don't include the curly braces uh, sorry circular braces and it gives us something like this and if we include the curly braces inside it it will give us some name all right now let's clear this so yeah let's go to the objects so objects in javascript are pretty basic and easy it's uh, like they are similar to the ones that we have in java or any other programming language just the difference in javascript or any other programming language is that objects can hold function inside um javascript in other languages it's not possible to hold a function so since java is a javascript is a weakly typed language again we can hold everything inside the object so let's say let my object equals again so anything at the left of the object is called as key and anything at the right is called as value so basically so if i want to add items inside the object i'll say let's create a student database name equals Uh, yeah, comma, and then I can say, um, maybe semester equals. Um, since it can hold uh, all the values, we can add a number value as well. So if I say semester five, all right, and then if I add something. is cool then i can say it's true all right now if i see my obj i find all of this inside it so this is basically how our object looks like uh so the elements at the left of the colon are called as keys and elements at the right of colon are called as values all right so it's easy to index an uh, element inside the object it's easier than uh, arrays all right so for this all you need to do is my object and you need to you just need to write the name of key this is a traditional method it's in fact used in python always right is well yeah so whatever the value associated with key whatever is the value associated with the key we get it back all right the other and the javascript way to do it is my array my obj dot the name of the key so if i say sem i'll receive back 5 right so this is how object works basically so whenever we are talking about an api right so what we can do is we can create our create our own fake api so what i do is i'll get this json data this this much part maybe all right and then i'll copy it and then i'll paste it inside here all right by so i shall give it a name and say let post equals so again i'll clear the screen okay i'll go back to the post all right so i'll go back to the post so we can see that the post is 
an array which is holding two objects. Since arrays and objects are dynamic, they can hold even in fact, so let, let's say you know, itself. Let's say I have an array and I want it to hold another array. So I see one, two, three, four. All right. So we can see that uh, array is holding another array. And if, okay. So if I name this array, right? if I name this array, um, let's say let array equals this, right? And I want to index this array. What I would do is in an array dot position one, and now I can get the whole array inside it because we are indexing. And I, as I told you, if we uh, add zero, mm -hmm. we'll get the uh, element at the position zero. All right, and if we add one, we'll get position in, uh, array at the index position one. So I hope you understood this. So an object can also hold an array. Uh, so if I say, I have to clear this again. Yeah. Okay, for an object to hold an array, what we need to do is to create a new object. Let's say um, my ARR equals Uh, object inside the array one, two, three, four, and five. All right, it's real, it's a random boolean just to show you guys. Right. And what we'll do is we'll just name this object new, okay, let name equals or name obj equals name obj now i can see all right and if i want to index my array i'll just use dot my arr so i'll just call it by this key name over here all right now since you know this the dynamic nature all you need to know is this now so yeah so i'll just clear the screen again for the post to run yeah. So now if I post, I say post. So since this is an array, to if I if I wanted to print only ID, so what would I have done is suppose I wanted to print this thing over here. The second object is post. Post at the position one. Okay, it's posts. Posts at the position one. So it will give me the user ID and the title, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what if I wanted? Okay. So what if I wanted? And what we can do is, you know, we can just copy this control C and take it to note. You guys can carry on in the browser. I will just write it on VS Code. Okay. So for now, I'll just comment all of this. And then I'll go just press enter a little bit. Then paste everything over here. And the commas are usually used to separate the elements. So this is a whole element, and this is the whole element which is separated by comma. And in JavaScript, any type of data uh, which holds this value like this is legal as well as in real life, you need to do it like this. All right, in JavaScript, this is legal. Like JSON is created from JavaScript. All right, so basically it accepts JSON as it is sometimes, but most of the time JSON data will have 
the integer in a string format. All right. So if I remove this, and now you can see the color change because it's a valid JavaScript value or key. Let's say if I wanted to say post. Post at the position one, all right, and then I wanted the ID from it, all right. So dot log post. And if I run this now, node. Okay, I need to save it first. Control S for save, node, index, dot js. Right? So you can see the ID over here is two, and I printed two. So this is some method which is used inside. Mm -hmm. All right. So the same method is used inside any of the web pages that you follow. So if I go to Brave browser, Let's say I clicked on something which is advanced and then I went to JavaScript type arrays. All right. Now you can see we have like browse inside the typed arrays. And then if we go to the examples, now you can see hash example over here. So this is something, this is something which was, uh, which I was explaining to you guys. All right. All right. Let's get back to the VS code again. So let's take another example where you want to print something else. So if you need to print something else, since I already have this console unlocked, what I can do is, is just say, I want name to be printed from the zero element or, or a title to be printed from zero element. I just go write zero and then I just print title. And if I just save it again and then I run the same command using the F button, yeah, I can see that there's some title written weird language. All right. So now, now you can see that there's an issue. What if I want title of both these statements? All right, both the objects, this title and this title. How would I get it? The normal answer is follow, but I want to. I want some variable to have this title uh, declared. All right. So let's say that my title equals post dot map. Since map function has capability to return again, map function gives you one it like item or element you can call it. So in this case, we are getting title back. All right. Title. So Whenever you are having multiple statement, let's let's say you wanted to have like body and title together, you would do this title and body. All right. Again, these names are not related with these ones. But I'm just saying, let's just type title and title, and then I'll just yeah. So if I say item, and then I will say return item. So for in each iteration, this whole thing is uh, considered as one element. All right. And now we need uh, when we get the item, we first like loop through this item, and then we loop through this item. And now what we need is we need this title from each element. So in first iteration, it will give us this. Title and then this title and then it will be stored in my title again. Item dot title, right? And then if I, I and then I have to save it and then I'll run again, right? So it won't give me back anything because I didn't console dot log it. Console dot log again my title. And I need to save this now. All 
so you can see we got both the titles the this one and this one over here so in some scenario let's say let's say we wanted user id and id together what would have we would have done is uh, we would have said uh, like just for convenience i'm typing this uh, variable name i don't mean i it isn't important that you should have the same name over here all right you can just say um, item 1 comma okay let's say item 1 right and if i print item 1 now you can see like i got the id and the user id so in the first one user id was just one and then id was just one and the second iteration it got the user id as one and the id id as two so this is how the web is manipulated over here all right okay so these are the techniques which are used to manipulate the api once again and there are some clever methods to copy the uh, copy the array it is called as referring the array and copying the array all right let's see how we refer and let's see how we copy the array so this must be the last topic basically we have reached 324 and we need to have a session q and a session here all right so what i'll do i'll just just clear this okay so yeah so first let's make an array like uh new or like new arr equals 12345 all right and let's say new let new new arr equals um new arr right so if i check new new error it will give me the old array back all right so now this new new error has referenced this array what if i change the original array again new error equals to 9 and 10 all right in my mind i think i have changed the original array and then i don't need to check whether this array is containing the same thing or not but let's see what happens so all right so if i see new new yaar okay so this is referring all right this this is referring to the old array now what if i want to copy this thing inside this new array so this is referring to the old location of the thing so basically mm all right so what we previously did was we had this thing called new okay i hope this is visible now so new array okay new array then we had another circle so like it was like this new what i say new new array all right and now what we did is we changed the value of new 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 array again and which is this now all right 
And what happened is when we change this, um, come on, all right. When we change this, so the array reference the position. The new new array was referencing the memory location of the new array, and now new array is something over here. New array. Let's see, update it. All right. But what if I don't want to reference the location and copy all the items, like basically making new uh, my own new array again? All right. So in our language, it would be considered like uh, when we are referencing the location, like a friend's car, and we just borrowed it. And if you want to own this car, like if you want to buy our own car, what would we do? So there's something uh, in JavaScript called spreading, all right? So if the, there are two people, let's say there are two students, let, um, let's say let, okay, let's two, three, four, five, six, seven, all right? Let three are, equals or just i'll say just let we are all right and we can initialize it like this and then use it later on so now i want that ria should have the same value that avi has and not reference avi like this API. it's completely wrong so while we are using api what happens is we are not borrowing the data actually we are just copying the data to a client all right client is a machine which i'm working on and server is some place like json placeholder but private so we don't have servers open so that people can hack us all right so now what ria does need to do is ria can use this three dots which is called a spread operator and now she can write ugly all right so since i just showed you this now ria owns this thing so basically what we were doing is ria equals to ugly since uh, okay, so since I've declared Ria using let and Avi equals to let, I can redeclare it again. All right, and if I say now Avi equals to Ria, now you can see it is true. All right, why? Because Ria is having the memory location of Avi and in JavaScript, please make this note. This is an important interview question. In JavaScript, then you assign a value to another memory location is that one and the value is given back on basis of memory location. All right. So this is something that you should remember. So now I'll just clear this again here. All right. So what I can do is I can declare Avi again over here. Okay. And now I can say that Ria equals to spread Avi. Spread A V H I Avi. All right. And now if I say Ria triple equals to Avi, it says it's false. Now Ria is not borrowing a car from Avi. Ria has purchased her own car and now it's equal. Now it's not equal. Like, all right. I hope you got this. Um, yeah. So, and this is the thing basically. So for next section, you guys to, you guys need to install these three things. You need to install node first. Uh, this is the node platform again. And Again, you need to have git bash. So, uh, yeah. 
Kit. And you can download Kit back from here. And then you need to have VS Code. All right. So VS Code is yeah. So you need to have these three things. And while using VS Code, guys. Okay. So VS Code. So there are few extensions you will need, which are JavaScript. Um, okay, so you, you can install any of these extensions for autocomplete in the next lecture. Uh, there's an extension called Swell. S V E L V E. This is the extension you need to uh, to run Swelt and have auto complete quickly. And then there's another extension called Live Server. And it's it's by an Indian with big day. You need this one. All right. So now I I want to introduce you to a topic called DOM. All right. So what's DOM? DOM is as I told earlier in the beginning, DOM is something which can query your HTML document. All right. So let's say I, I, I wanted some tags from here. So I can use this arrow button and I can choose. All right. So it says ing. So I would say just let ing says images equals to document or get elements by tagging since it's an image so I ing and it should be in a string form all right ing is so now it has collected the html tags with all the images if I if I can click this one see I can literally like hover them and see whether which image is which one. All right. So if I want to index IMGS at the position three, I can do that. Dot and we have all this thing. You can use all this, um, let's say, uh, Methods, all right. So methods are something which uh, which is provided by the built-in data structures. They are also known as functions, but since they are built-in functions, we call them methods, all right. So these are the methods which are which can be used in DOM, all right. So there's another way to do it. So what we can do is we can make our own HTML and JS thing, all right. Let's let's begin. And I'll just you put screen and then I'll just close the settings. Close all. Okay. I'll go back to the folder. I've created a new project again. So I'll just add index.html. All right. To have the whole boilerplate code, you just need to have an exclamation over here. And then after it, you just can write hi. Hi. This is free. Okay. And then I can have a H5. I am a first and a teacher. Right. We can have another one saying P. Happy teachers pay. Right. And if I have this live server thing, I just need to press this button which says go live. Right. Before that, I need to save this. I just press go live. And now it leaves me on this. So, hi, this is Srinivas. I'm a full stack developer and a teacher. Happy Teachers Day. All right. So I'll go back to VS Code again. And now, how do I write my JavaScript over here? It's just a simple HTML element, right? All I need to do is, is press tab, write script. Okay. Not source, script is C, R I P T script. 
Okay. And now I want to have this one. All right. So if you can see the screen, there are uh, three uh, three different elements of the screen. First one is H1, and then H5, and then P. So I want to have H1. So what I can do is select my name equals document dot get element by tag name. Again, if you can see elements mean multiple, so we are expecting an array already. All right. So I'll say H1. And then I'll just write zero. Since this is an array, we need okay. Let's let's, let's do one thing. We'll just console log log it out first. Log out log. My name. And I'll just save it. I'll just go to the browser again. Okay. So if if we go to this side, uh, local host I five zero zero. I I can see this right. And if you press uh, all right, if you press uh, F twelve in your Windows machine or inspect the element and go to the console, all right, we can see the HTML collection one over here. All right, and this is H one. So yeah. So this is this is how you have to do it. This is how you like query the data of HTML inside the JavaScript. All right, and then if you go back to the code, dot All right. So for that we say zero and then dot another HTML and then save it again. And since this is a live server, I don't need to refresh it again and again. I'll just go back to my tape browser. Alright, so this is this is this is over here. So this now this is hi, this is Trinivas. All right. So let's let's see whether I can do something else with it. Mm, so so this thing was the traditional method, like get element by ID, or was the traditional method to use it. What if I had like multiple F1s over here? So if you on your Windows machine, if you press Alt Shift and Down Arrow key, it will directly copy it for you. All right. So I have five. Hi, this is Trinivas. I can change the name a bit. Hi, this is um, Amar. Hi, this is Hussain. Maybe. Okay. So if I save this now and I want to get all of this for it, what what will I do is I'll just say name let names equals document or query selector all. I'll just add H1. So this is the modern way after 2015 to do it. It's uh, after 2015. JavaScript was uh, handled by a standard which is called as ECMAScript, ECMA, ECMA, and they were responsible to control the JavaScript and update it according to the developers' need all around the world. All right. So now if I console dot log, console dot log. Means any is save it and jump back to the browser again. Hmm. So now you can see there's a node list which has 
which gives us an array of five H one tags. All right. So this is one of the ways you can do it. And if you want to have a single element inside it, what you can do is you can just say H one at the position one or zero, and then save it again. You have to write inner text. All right. So the inner text function gives us the inner text inside the HTML element. All right. If I save this, you can just hold that back to the preview browser, and then I just can see how this is showing us again. Right. So this are these is this is how you use Tom. So uh, for you guys, I have a project over here. Uh, okay. So for you guys, I have a project. Maybe if you guys can do it, it would be better. So this is a tic-tac-toe project. I have taught this to beginners like millions of times again. So I'll open it with VS Code, right? So okay. So. So if you go back to the S two and then file open and then go to desktop and then this project I can open this project again. Okay. Yeah. So this is the HTML used for tic uh, tac toe, and if you guys can create the tic tac toe of your own, again everything I thought can be used over here. Because I think I have covered everything which needs you guys to complete this project. All right. So if you guys can do this, it would be better. And now, now I think I am open for Q and A session. If you guys want to. Then um, the first question from participants. Is what advantages does Swelt have over Mer or MeanStack? So let's get back to my slide again. Okay. So this is the question stays right. So basically, while choosing a framework, you guys never see what advantages it have over like QJS. It's it's not a competition. It's a developer's clever choice whether he wants to use Swelt, React, like MeanStack. So it comes on React again. So Mern is guys basically um, MongoDB, Express, React, and N stands N stands for Node. All right. So whenever you are using any of the framework or a compiler, the main goal is not to compete with others. Like it's just not my preference to like use Angular. But everything has its own place, all right. For building an enterprise application, you need React. Like if I go to Amazon. dot com. So now, uh, if you guys uh, need to check whether it's built on React, all you guys need to do is React. So you need to install this. So once you are you are having this React tools, okay. Let's say add to Chrome and then add extension. Okay, so now I can see a React button over here. I don't know if it is visible to you guys, but if I go on Amazon, all right, and I refresh it. Okay, Facebook. So for I guess for this to work, I need to start a new instance of the browser. So basically, whenever uh, the brow uh, the website uses a React page, you can see that this thing will turn blue. Since I cannot reload the browser as my meeting is going on over here, I just suggest you to do this. And I'll just suggest to the person that whenever you are using any of the framework, it's never used for the competition. It's for e it's all about ease. Like suppose if I'm using a Suppose if I'm using a uh, 
some library to make a page it depends upon the page how big it is so for like enterprise application like facebook and amazon i would prefer react or view again but for a smaller application which has smaller bundle size just uh, just like your uh, blog or something similar you can always use uh, the swelt compiler all right okay the second question asked by participant is uh, which framework is best django swelt or flask okay so this question is my favorite question thanks for asking again so the framework which is best cannot be like i just like i told cannot be considered as a best framework like i started my journey from django i started creating apis using django and other stuff all right um let, let me just like stop presenting first all right yeah so i started my journey with django but at the end again it comes back to the application how you guys want to apply it how you guys want to use it again so basically uh, whenever i'm creating a, an application which needs fast workflow uh, let's say uh, i'm working with a company which needs fast workflow i will always prefer django because it supports rad which is rapid application development and for that reason django is better all right but let's say i uh, i am working on some project which needs critical handling and everything which is easy with node again so in that case i wouldn't prefer django all right so as if you are asking this question as a front end part which uh, which framework is the best the answer would be the uh, answer would be vue js vue js is the best framework for front end developers since it's seriously very easy it doesn't needs like a redux like a external store it already has its own store called vuex after that on second uh, level as a competition <laughs> it would be react react and vue js are similar in the concept they both use virtual dom again and the loser would be angular because angular is seriously bloated and slow and i don't prefer angular as a developer but again it's all about the application where you want to apply the framework okay the third question is how do ess6 arrow functions work okay so basically there's a difference between ess6 arrow functions and normal functions i'll show you it I'll show it to you i just present my screen again all right uh, okay i hope you guys can see my screen i'll go back to this document now so basically whenever you are trying to use a function there is a function name equals all right and functions return something um, and then if i call me okay so basically this function is used whenever you are uh, doing some operation with old stuff so in new stuff it, the functions are basically as uh, the arrow functions are basically called as a callback function or the function which doesn't require this so if i want to uh, re like reconfigure this whole function using the arrow function i would be doing it like this const name equals um like this and then the arrow function so basically it's the sleeker way to write right okay so it says identify name is already taken i'll just change it to name form okay right. if i run main func main func to run okay so let's come back to its use case so i'm going to talk to center so whenever you uh, initialize a function and write it as a whole and you are using it with some uh, framework like react or swelt or vue js the whole point of this function 
is to get an api or do some operations on the values which is which are already there in your framework so what you guys need to do is uh you 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 should uh, use uh, callback functions which is arrow functions if you are not good with object oriented programming because uh, in object oriented programming you use this keyword a lot this and whenever you use this function uh, which are the normal ones the regular functions you need to address them using this dot function so it gets to, uh, like kind of hectic all right okay can, uh, can you please repeat the use of dot shift function and dot unshift functions sure so unshift is used for adding something inside a array all right and shift is used for removing something from array and if you guys want to check the uh, use case of shift and unshift just create an array and just try it on your own play play around a little bit and you guys will know all right Okay. Now, uh, uh, second last question is how the uh, how the array is actually changed after execution of each function. So it depends what the function is doing to the array. All right. Let's say you are using a map function, and its map is used for basically manipulating the array. On other hand, if you are using for each, the array won't be manipulated again. So basically, when you are working with React, you use map function a lot because the main goal is to manipulate the array by Like let's say, uh, like in my company, we were working on some project, and it had some values with coins. All right, we work with Bitcoin, so we had some values uh, that was coming by an API, and at every instance, I need to store that uh, thing inside a database. So map function helped me a lot. Uh, I mapped everything and I displayed it on the screen. At the same time, I showed uh, like stored it inside the database. so it depends on the function what function you are actually writing and what operation you need to do so if you don't want to return anything again you can go for for each but if you want to return something and manipulate the same data let's say uh, you uh, you have some value and let's say you have a weighing machine all right so weighing machine changes its value when any other person can uh, gets on the weighing machine and the value is displayed over there so how is the value updated all right so let's say i was on the weighing machine and now my friend is going on the weighing machine the weighing machine is already carrying the value of my weight all right which is like 56 or 57 maybe uh, randomly and if my friend goes over there and if we use map function we are just changing the array to the my friend's weight all right array or variable to the my friend's weight Okay, so last question. Uh, as the participants are students, they would like to know that is JavaScript uh, good for coding interview? Okay, so basically any language is good for coding interview. Uh, since since I have a little five minute time in my hand, I will tell you what you should learn in twenty twenty and what you should know as a web developer in twenty twenty. So I will just share my screen again and we'll finish it in two two minutes again. So. what languages are best in 2020 to learn as a web developer again all right so there is something you need to know which is golang all right golang is a language by google and we need uh, like we need golang because it's the fastest language ever produced again if you have a misconception that c++ is fast so it's not so if you if you need an api which is faster like some there are some website we need uh, which loads faster because they have an api which are which is seriously very fast again api is something like this which looks something like this it's a server stored on some another place and we need to fetch the data from the server in order to show it on our facebook on a google queries just like i search golang and i receive some data from the api all right so golang is something you need to learn to create an api again to create uh, again for backend For React developers and React Native developers, also the Angular developers can do this. You need to learn something called GraphQL. GraphQL is really very important for a web developer in 2020. And there's a backend like Firebase for GraphQL called Hasura. All right. Yeah. So this instant GraphQL API for your data. All right. This is the. These are some things you need to learn. And the most important thing. in web development 
at 2020 you need to know type script pytt type scrlpt type script if you want to get hired as a web developer or full stack developer in any firm like in 2020 or 2021 you need to know type script because it's unlike javascript it's not a weakly type language it's strongly type language and such type of languages are needed for better error detection and prevention all right so these things are very important and it's it's not like the old technologies are based and they are trash right now but you guys can use them in your advantage obviously there are multiple companies still using asp.net the company is still using django all right so no technology is bad but newer technologies tend to have more efficient uh, efficiency in them all right that's it okay thank you sir over to ridvika thank you mr shrinivas shah sir and all for actively participating in today's session we will be meeting tomorrow at the same time at 2 pm for day 2 of the session of this workshop be safe and keep learning thank you all